What's your initial thoughts on the bike? Sick, isn't it? It's, um, it's just really clean, tidy paints, top class. Colour coordinate all the way up to the cockpit. <laughs> keeping it, uh, keeping it postal. Keeping it postal. So we're here, 51 Assassin bike build. Fit a few components already. Where are we up to and what's next? We basically um, prepped the frame, which didn't need very much work because uh, the guys have already done the majority of that. There's no facing needed or anything like that. That was already done for us. Um, so we've basically unpacked it, run the hoses through for the brakes, um, connected up the headset stem handlebars and set the length of the hoses. Uh, and next we're going to fit the wheels and the tyres. So we've got two wheel options. First wheel option is... Uh, this is the 101 Explore. Um, so this is Zips, kind of out and out um, gravel wheel. So you, as light as they can make it, as low profile as they can make it. Um, for when the aerodynamics is not so key, so for hilly races, um, this is the perfect wheel really, as light as they can make it. Uh, the unique thing with the 101 is they've got a really wide rim bed so that it creates a, a very square profile with the tyre that you use. Normally you use something around about 45 on here, which is what we're going to use uh, for the majority of the time. Um, and it creates a really nice square profile. So a little like we do for mountain biking, you usually have a square profile on the back to really dig the tire in. Um, and then the unique thing with the 101 is that it's designed so that the spoke bed in the center is extremely stiff, but the rim itself can cant itself. So you get a little bit of your angle when it's hitting um, the ground. And it just adds a whole load of dampening into the ride so you, that it tracks the ground uh, on all of the really tricky stuff gives a really nice natural feel uh, to the way that the bike rides. It's unlike a lot of carbon wheels that become a little bit too stiff if you've been used to alloy wheels, this puts the feeling of the alloy wheel kind of back into the ride. It's a really nice product. What hubs are we, what hubs are we running? This is their, um, their kind of standard um, zip hub at the moment. So uh, toolless end caps if you ever need to change those all the different freehab bodies. We're using XDR for, um, for everything this year. Um, but yeah, nice solid, solid equipment. Um, really well thought out. Road wheel set up. How does the hub sound? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got the 383 Firecrest, um, which is the wheel that we're going to use most of the time for um, road and for the kind of faster gravel races. So you've obviously got the aerodynamics from the, the deeper section wheel, um, which increasingly with gravel, um, something like the Gralic, for example, it's a little bit of a faster race. So this is the perfect wheel for those kind of faster, um, more traditional kind of gravel races. Um, not so well suited for the really rough kind of Spanish ones, but this will be perfect for the Gralic and for Unbound. Um, a little bit of a faster profile. Um, match that up with, um, again, a 40 or a 45 mil tyre, depending on um, the kind of state of the ground and what, what traction we need. Um, same hubs as the 101, um, and we're using again obviously XDR, it's all SRAM, um, and we're using uh, 160 rotors front and back, um, so SRAM red rotors. Uh, they've got a kind of semi floating design um, and really good heat dissipation. All of this area in the center is designed to get rid of the heat, uh, and you've got a nice steel rotor um, for actually breaking on. Sapim CX Ray spokes, so fairly standard aero, very, very strong spoke. Um, and the nice thing with Zip in terms of the mechanics 
is they've still got the uh, nipples on the outside so we can actually tree wheels during the race or, or you know between races and, and not have to take the tyre off which is a major faff for the cheapest tyre so it's quite important that we can do that. Perfect. Same before when you're talking about the um, length of the top tube. Oh yes, yeah, so a really unique thing with 51 is they've um, followed a little bit more of a uh, kind of mountain bike design. It's a longer top tube uh, intentionally so that you can run a shorter stem, which keeps the, the geometry the same, so your reach is going to end up being the same. Um, but it means that the front end of the bike handles much more quickly, much more agile, um, shorter stem, narrower bar, which is the, the way that everything's going. Um, but you keep the reach in the, in the frame, so maybe a tension moves out to make it more agile. Just go through a few decals on the bike. Starting at the back, we have 8 Bike Co on the lower stay, Assassin, US Postal logo, Ride It Like You Stole It on the down tube. This is edition one of 25. First one. First bike build. This is the first bike build, isn't it, of an Assassin so US Postal Colours. And the one of 25 is like a special run of paint that they're doing, focusing on old school race uh, colours and designs. So it's, a, it's the start of a kind of pretty special product for them, um, which Jesse's going to be showing up for. Them. And it is. OG, like the decals, so nice top cap as well. Matching, but matching um, electrical tape. It's come together pretty well. And what do you think about the dropouts? Yeah, so the other really interesting thing about the frame. So is starting with the front one. Adjustable dropouts, front and back. So you, on the front, uh, the major thing that it affects is the rake of the fork. Um, so usually you just have one single rake, but if you flip this chip around the other way, um, you go from 53 like it is at the moment to 45. So it uh, it handles better 45 with something like a 650B wheel. And then on the back, um, you've got uh, three or four different options of flip chip so that you can get these into different um, positions exactly the same thing that shortens up the wheelbase uh, and allows you to use different wheels uh, you can use a road tire you can use a 650b you can use a full-size mountain bike um, and basically set the bike up for the individual race so it's really good for what jesse's using it for because he's using the bike for several different things uh, and we need to be able to change them relatively quickly uh, in between races and just i'm actually noticing now what's this um is this for the hose in here? Yeah, a little bit of sound deadening um, so that the hose doesn't rattle around. Um, so it's just a nice uh, addition to keep everything nice and quiet. What BB size are we using on this? Again, T47 is uh, the standard that 51 use on, on all of their frames at the moment. Is this a 56 or is it classified as a large? Um, it's, a, yeah, it's a large and it's difficult really to call it a 56 because the intentional change to that top tube so you, therefore the bike is longer and more stretched out and so it's kind of um, sized more like a mountain bike where they'd have small medium large and large. I actually can't wait to ride this bike I've got American Oakley hat ready for the America trip as well so we're, we're branded up and we've got a nice Arundel carbon cages as well and what did you say before about how they can move the um, cage down? Yeah, so again, to make a little bit more space, if you're running a frame pack in here, um, we can move the, the top bottle cage down and just make a little bit more space in there as well. If you're only running one bottle cage, you can put it in whichever one of those positions you like. Um, and we've also got cage points underneath as well. So if you need a fuel bottle or a third bottle, um, there's an option to do that and you can run a, uh, you could run a cage on the top but most people run a bento box on the top um, so just for a few gels a few, few kind of mid-race snack type things 
uh, just gives you a load more options. We really have thought of everything with this bike. What do you reckon of the dropper post? The dropper post just finishes it off, doesn't it? Uh, when do you think it's going to come in handy? Mystery tool? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Sending it on the mystery tool. On the, on the South Downs? Yeah, yeah. So with the bike fit, Jesse's going to have a professional bike fit um, once we've got the bike together. But from a mechanic's point of view, it's important to have um, the bike almost in the right place anyway. Um, and we've gone through with various bikes, we've taken details over the time that he's been riding, um, including quite a serious kind of um, saddle change to physique uh, part way through last year. Um, and that had implications because the sit bones end up in a different place and we had to be quite careful about where we put them. Um, so what I like to do with a gravel bike is end up um, putting the kind of pedal uh, or the saddle in relation to the pedals in the same position. So the leg length is obviously the same and the setback needs to be the same so that the rider ends up in the same position. Um, but it's the front end of the gravel bike that changes and especially with the Assassin um, because of the longer top tube and the shorter stem that we were talking about. So the bar reach actually changes intentionally on the Assassin um, but what we've got here, the 725, which is the most relevant thing, that's actually the position that we put the hands in. Um, so although the shape of the bar has changed, the length of the stem has changed, the length of the top tube has changed, Jesse's hands in relationship to his saddle will end up in the same position. Um, so that's a really key starting point. And obviously then when we go for a professional bike fit, um, we can make small changes to that, you know, millimeters um, to get everything absolutely perfect. But we know we're already in the right ballpark. Uh, pair up our SRAM Red uh, Explore rear mech. This is a longer cage, longer parallelogram with Explore. Um, so it's important that you use the correct mech with the correct cassette. Um, and then for the pairing process, um, we've got the access button on here. Um, want everything fully charged to begin with. Turn the green light on. If you keep holding down, eventually it will start to flash. It's now in pairing mode. If we then go to the shifters uh, and hold down their axis button, the light will come on and flash quite quickly. That means the right shifter's paired. We do the same on the left. And then we turn off pairing mode by simply pressing the axis button again on the rear mech. And then we can use the shifters to actuate the mech. Before we fit it just check everything's working so the other nice feature um, with the axis rear mech is um, if you do for some reason lose connection with the uh, shifters or if you your shifter batteries run out of power as well because you've got two coin cells in the shifters um, you can still use the rear mech by using the button so a single press will put your mech into a harder gear 
and a double press put it into a lower gear so that's a feature that a lot of the other brands don't have um, as long as you've got some power in the battery you can still uh, make your rear neck function t47 so that's the the uh, threaded bottom bracket standard that's in the frame 68 mil wide and then this is going to be for a dub uh, crank which is SRAM's standard um, now which is just a little bit shy of um, 30 mil yeah so this is PTFE tape um, it's a really good way of getting rid of any noise from the bottom bracket I mean the SNVT bottom brackets done a lot of that work for us anyway um, because they've gone away from all of the shims and stuff that has been used on bottom brackets previously um, but PTFE tape is basically designed to waterproof connections um, so that's why I use it on the bottom brackets occasionally um, depending on the use it's particularly good for gravel battery tech because we're going to be flying um, with this bike quite a bit. Um, SRAM battery is super easy to take on and off. Um, it's a really kind of easy connection, a bit like a Lego brick, um, so it's a really nice thing. But what you must do when you, you travel with them is you must use a proper plastic cover so that you don't short circuit the battery uh, and that's quite important for getting on and off the plane um, because especially for America um, if you don't have those things in place they'll basically just chuck your batteries in the bin um, because they don't consider them safe for being on a plane uh, so make sure you use your, your covers package here for Jesse Yates just arrived fresh patties for Yates what we got inside Just arrived at the workshop. Check it out. Check it out. What have we got? Fresh valves, uh, fresh syringes. So these are mill kit um, valves and syringes. So you can basically um, fit your sealant without causing any mess at all. This syringe goes straight through the center of the valve and it's a very special valve that they've created uh, which has a self-sealing valve on the inside of the wheel. So that's your traditional um, valve core with uh, an extra nylon insert which pushes the uh, self-closing valve in the inside. Super clean, super neat really cool piece of kit. And Rue is clearly excited. Rue is mad about it. <laughs> and the Hasselhoff. And the Hasselhoff. Saves your ride. These are all the tools it lists that it has built in. 
So it's a do it all. It's a do it all box that you fit to under the bottle cage. And it's genuinely, we both saw this at a um, show a couple of weeks ago. And there's been, there's a lot of tools on the market that do this kind of thing. Um, but this genuinely, when they demoed it, is a is a really cool piece of kit, super light, um, and it's it's really well thought out, really nice and light. So we'll probably do a separate video on how this works at some point. What's the thing behind this tyre? This is a slightly narrower um, mud tyre that we're going to try out. It's actually probably would be my go-to tyre for the UK at this time of year. Um, so you, with a narrower tyre, it cuts through the mud better and gets down to this grippy stuff that you need underneath. Um, but it also gives you more frame clearance as well. Um, so you're less likely to clog up the rear wheel um, and start getting problems with, with uh, not being able to ride basically. Just setting up the tyre onto the wheel with the milk kit valve. Now the nice thing is if you put sealant in here straight away and it doesn't seal properly then you've got a real mess to deal with. The nice thing about the one way valve on the milk kit is that we can inflate this tyre check that everything is doing what it should be and then even though the uh, core is not in the valve the tyre is staying on the rim nicely no sealant in there no mess then we can release the air out of that valve when we're ready uh, and inject the sealant through the valve and at no point is there, you know, loads of sealant sloshing around and making a mess. It's super clean, super tidy.
you've got the uh, Physique Argo 3D printed saddle, honeycomb weave, um, and it's uh, based on the kind of snub nose uh, saddle design. Uh, so the back of the saddle, similar to how it's always been, they've basically removed a lot of material from the front to open up your hip angle and mean that you can have a flatter back without the discomfort. Uh, and that's made it up to the reverb post. And then what you can do as well is you can fit it different heights. So if you press it halfway down, then so if you don't want it like all the way down, sometimes it feels a bit weird having it all the way down.